Hello family, welcome back to Chronic Gaffe. This is Isabel Gopal. I have been away for a while, but I am excited to be back. And I have a word from the Lord for us all. And um, the title is called Warning Against Pride. And we're going to be focusing in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verses 15 to 27. I pray that you write this down and I pray that you go back on your own time and read it and sit with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to give you more revelation of this word. And let's just pray before I jump into this. Heavenly Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. Holy Spirit, I welcome you to this space today, not only with me, but with all your, your the sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. And I just ask you, Lord Jesus, to open up our hearts so that we can see ourselves for who we are and that we are sinful people, Father God, but you are a God of love and that you want us to come to you with a repentance that says, Lord, I don't know what I have, but if I do have it, I give it to you today. I pray in the name of Jesus that people are transformed, that they're changed and they have a, a mind ready to be renewed so that, Father God, that we can walk in the victory that you have already promised us. I pray this in all in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Family, this word had me on my knees in repentance, okay? This word had me ringing out my heart saying, Lord, help me in my in the place of my um, pride if I have it wherever it's at. Show me myself. Put a mirror up to me, Lord, and show me who I really am so that I no longer live and uh, have a sinful nature in me, but I begin to walk in a place of um, joy, peace, and love. I thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And I pray that he does a mighty thing in you. Amen. So, um, quick question. When was the last time you seek the Lord? When was the last time you prayed and had a place of scheduling some time with the Lord, right? Where you're like, okay, every day, Lord, I'm going to seek you um, for 30 minutes or for a half an hour. Um, when was the last time you asked God questions about some things that is you're dealing with in your life or maybe even in a nation? When was the last time you said, God, you are excellent. You are sovereign. I know that you have the answers. I'm going to come to you about this situation. This is you. you. Answer this on your time. Because if you say, I don't remember. We go through things every day. We come into situations every day. And one thing that I learned is that I seek the Lord in everything. <laughs> because I am nothing without him. And I know that because I'm nothing without him, that I need him. I need him to show me the direction. I need him to tell me which, which direction to go, right? And that goes for anything, right? And I, I love that the Lord is focusing on this because we're in a place in our nation and in our world where um, everything is divided, right? It's the enemy is saying, do your, do, what says, do thy will, do your own will. And God says, do my will, do his will be done, his will be done. And so if we're talking about pride, we know pride, um, the highlight of what pride looks like is Satan. Satan um, allowed pride to get him kicked out of heaven. Satan allowed pride to separate him from God's glory. And so um, if you want to know what pride looks like, look at the devil. Look at Satan himself. Look at Lucifer. Because what he thought is that he could be a God. He thought he could make his own decisions. He thought that he could do his own thing. And what God says a long time ago is I created all things. And he has already an order and a strategic plan for it all. And it all to be victorious. It all be, be beautiful and prosperous and perfect. We just have to obey God's word. And so if you don't know what the opposite of pride is it is humility and for the past couple of um weeks i have been once again diving in the book of matthews and he's been speaking on um, establishing his people in the kingdom ways and he highlights the place where he talks about what it looks like to be blessed and it's not what the world says is blessed it's what the lord says is blessed and one of the things he said of what blessed is is a person that has a contrite heart that's the right word, Contr contrite heart. 
and that is a heart of humility and so if you don't know what pride means pride means an excessive love of one's own excellence or elevating one's thoughts and opinions above god's word and so um if you have your own answers for everything where are you giving space for god to do his thing where are you giving space for god to give you answers to things where are you giving space for god to work in your life and so this is very important because um i searched my heart and i got some pride right not no more the lord delivered me all right i gave it to the lord but i had to give him the pride that i had that um that i can do things on my own and that i can change people and i can make my own plans and i can do my own things that's a lie from the pit of hell right and so let's jump into what god said in his word and i want to talk to you about how we even got here okay <laughs> glory be to god so he gave us um some verses and in verse in proverbs 8 i forgot the what the verse is but proverbs 8 it says wisdom calls out against pride arrogance and perverted speech once again wisdom calls out against pride arrogance and perverted speech think about what the enemy did right he had pride he was arrogant because he thought he could sing and he had a preferred speech where he was trying to whisper in people's ears and tell them, hey, I'm going to be God. You should follow me. Right? He thought he was better because he could sing. Because of what God blessed him with. And there's many of us where God has blessed us with a talent. God has blessed us with a gift. God has blessed us with maybe finances or a successful business. Or God has blessed us with something. And we took it to a place where we thought we did that on our own. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Repent. <laughs> Repent. And so um, I just wanted to put that in your heart. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction. Why is he saying that, right? Pride is going to destroy you because that is the beginning of it all. When you think that you are the end all be all and you think that you could do all things in your own strength it's going to take you to anger it's going to take you to arrogance it's going to take you to um enviness jealousy it's going to take you to so many other um spiritual so many other spirits that you do not want any part of because it's going to destroy you you never fill the shoes of right you'll never fill the shoes of god and so all the spirits that come with pride is going to destroy you because you're always going to do more and be mad at someone else for what they have and what they're doing and how they're going about it because you want to be the king. And we only got one king. His name is King Jesus. Amen. And so he says, in a haughty spirit before a fall, you will fall to your knees. Let me give you an example in the real world. Diddy, where is he at right now? We are in a society where people have, they idolize people, they idolize places, they idolize things. They put these things above God, and they put these positions above God, and they put their dreams above God. And guess what happens? They get to a place where they fall down because you'll never be able to reach a, 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 the a top of a mountain without the strength of God to get you there. And then you're going to need the strength of God to keep you there. Amen. And if you're doing it um, in the way of darkness, he's going to pull you down anyways. And he's going to pull many people with you. Repent. Um, First Peter chapter 5, 16 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. What does that look like? Humble yourself, therefore. Um, the other day, I was, um, the Lord had reminded me of the alabaster alabaster box the alabaster um in the bible where um a young lady came and she pulled out her precious oil upon jesus and she um, wiped jesus's feet with her tears and her hands and what that looked like was her giving the rest of herself the most i should say the most ex see the things that we think are expensive and it's worth valuable, um, God doesn't see it as valuable. What God sees as valuable is us. 
and so there's parts in us like this maybe this pride that I found that I had a little of Lord help me um, that was so deep in my heart that God had to show me myself for me to pour myself out to him and say oh my gosh Lord I do have that I for, forgive me and then he showed me where it came from he showed me where it was birthed at he showed me where it was planted at and so you know that's why I said if you sit here and you say oh well this ain't for me because I don't got no pride you need to repent already because pride says I'm perfect when we only have one perfect one and that's Jesus Christ and then um, he says, he says, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, Ooh, that he may lift you up in due time. When you are humbling yourself under God's mighty hand, you're humbling yourself to a place of prayer. You're humbling yourself to a place of um, what God um, says your worth is. You're humbling yourself to a place of, God, what did you say? Who do you say I am? What did your word say about my situation? What did your word say about my heart? What did your heart, what did your word say about my mind? I, Lord, I know I'm nothing. I am um, a sin. Have I live in sin. I'm sinful. My thoughts are sinful. Yeah, it's disgusting. Lord, help me. Right? And when you put your hand, when you come underneath the hand of God, you're, it's like, ooh, Holy Spirit, Jesus. think about a puppet master, right? Except for, you know, you're not a puppet, but think about it like that. When, when he was under the hand, he was able to move him in a way where he, he was being able to talk a certain way. He was able to move a certain way. And that's what God wants to do in your life through the Holy Spirit is that when you surrender your heart and everything that you are, you pour out your the parts of you that you thought was hidden in your heart and you thought that you were healed from and God reveals it to you, you pour that thing out to him. God is able to utilize the Holy Spirit to move in your life mightily and, and work through you mightily. You're giving him freedom to do what he wants to do in your life. Why and, and the reason why he put you here in the first place. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 23, 9 says, The Lord Almighty planned it to bring low the pride of all glory and to humble all who are renowned on this earth. I don't know if y'all see it, but God is knocking down every pedestal of every idol and every person that people lift up high. Because at the end of the day, God's name, the, he said every knee shall bow and every name, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And not only is he Lord, but God is so sovereign. Oh, Jesus. He is so sovereign. He is so good. I mean, think about this. God it does not want, and he said he's a jealous God. He wants no God above him. And so there's things in our lives that we are putting above him. And, we're, and, and God don't like it. God don't like it. And God wants to remove this thing so that he can do what he put you here to do and so that you can move in purpose. And so pride and, and oh, this is another thing, right? Pride is refusing to see yourself as God sees you. Ultimately, pride is extreme love and focus on oneself, right? When, you're, when you are in pride, and this is what he had to show me, right? He says, refusing to see yourself as God sees you. Sometimes we walk around not being confident in who God says we are. Sometimes we don't do what God has told us to do because we feel like we're lacking something. Sometimes we don't move as fast as God tells us to move because we feel like we need more information. And that maybe you're not worthy of what God is doing. And that's what God had to show me. Like, you know, there's sometimes you don't feel worthy of some of the things that God wants to bless you with. Sometimes you don't feel like you are the one, God, me, you know, sometimes I said this before, you know, many times before, but sometimes when I read God's word and he shows, he tells you about what he wants to do in your life, you don't believe it. And your, your lack of belief in what God said about you is pride by itself. It's pride by itself. And that's why I was on my knees saying, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Amen. Even to this place where I'm at right now, right? Even talking to you right now. You know, the enemy was trying to whisper in my ear that I wasn't worthy enough to speak to people and to teach and share the word of God and made me go back into a place of, I'm not worthy, right? And um, 
So I started doing my own thing, right? Right? Disobedience. <laughs> I started doing my own thing. Started focusing on other things. But that's not what God has called me to do. And so I'm back. Amen? But let me tell you the true thing that God has shown me. Um, he says your pride is going to lead you to captivity. And just like I said, I kind of testified about, you know, um, that sometimes you don't do things because you don't think that you, you don't see yourself as God sees you. And it holds you captive in a place where you can't move forward or holds you captive in a place where you don't walk in your calling, right? You don't walk in purpose. And let me tell you what God said. He says, captivity to, to those who are led with pride. And it imprisons you and confines you and enslaves you by a foreign power. And that power is not the power of the Holy Spirit. That power that's going to hold you captive is the power of darkness demonic force principalities and so he says one it's, it's like you're taken into war but you're not ready for battle you understand what i'm saying he says the state of being um for um being in a place of 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 being held up you're being held and so let me tell you let me tell you a quick word of how we got to this whole um warning right because you know me Lord, I need more. I need more. I know. I don't understand. He had given me, one day he was just like talking about thumb. Thumb. And I'm like, what do you mean thumb, right? He's talking about your thumb and your toe thumb, right? These things are important for your body, right? Because without your thumb, you can't hold things, right? You can't use your sword. You can't run. You can't stand. You can't do nothing. And so he sent me to, hold on. Let me see. Oh, Jeremiah? No, Judges. Judges. Chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And it says, But Ad Adani Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toe. And Adon, Adani Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and their great toe cut off, gathered their meat under my table. And as I have done, so God has required me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Go to Judges chapter 1, verses, um, read the whole book, read the whole chapter 1. But, and then I'm like, what do you in the world so back in that time the only way to defend themselves was with a sword the only way to do things is by walking by walking places running places they needed their th thumb they needed their toe so this bell um this king um the way that he defeated his enemies and the way that he weakened his enemies was cutting off their toes their great toe and their thumb so that they couldn't fight back and so that they were weakened and he said in verses 7 he says and Adani Bezik said three score and ten kings having their thumbs and their great toes cut off gathered their meat under my table see how he weakened them he put them to a place where they were under his table and we're going to talk about this under thing because God want to show you the victory amen and he says, as I have done, so God has required me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and then he died. So what he did to these kings, right, God told um, the, the tribe of Judah to go do the same thing to him. It was the tribe of Judah, right? Yeah. Yep. And so I wanted to press that into your heart today because God has sent his son to give us victory god has sent his son so that we are free He cut the chains off of being in bondage but people are going to be bound by them holding on to a spirit of pride and the only way that you can um tackle and let me say ta tackle the only way that you're going to be able to hold the sword of the spirit right is by holding on to the word of god but y'all missing thumbs out here Y'all missing toes out here. 
y'all missing things because y'all allow the enemy to weaken you by you with your chest up, but you ain't got no fingers or thumbs. Lord, I pray that you give it again. I'm giving this the way y'all give it. You gave it to me, right? And he gave me verses, right? And he, this is what he wants you to do because when Joshua was alive, Joshua um, was alive. Read the book of Joshua, guys. Um, Joshua led a the tribe of Judah, and he led them to take over kingdoms because God promised them land. And what, as I was reading some things that he showed was, um, and and let's pause for a second. Let's go back a little bit. You know, Moses didn't get to see the promised land because of that moment of pride, where he said, "We." Jesus, we have done this all this time and not God has done this for you all this time. And so Joshua was the one that led his people into the promised land. And Joshua was the one that led um, many victories in Jesus name. Well, in God's name. And um, he showed you what he did with the kings that thought they were going to come up against the tribe, the, the, the tribe of Judah, um, God's people. And then, and it, and listen to this because you know what? I tell you, y'all better thank the Lord user in today's day and not in that time. Because if y'all didn't have strength in God, then woo, it would have been a problem. Second Samuel's chapter four twelve, and David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people for Israel's sake come on God is establishing you in this time but God wants to cleanse your heart so that you can have the character to lead many to Christ and not only have the character for that but so that you walk with a banner of Christ on your chest amen and he exalted he said he had exalted his kingdom for his people, Israel's sake, right? And he's demanding that of us. Amen. He goes to um, First Chronicles chapter 20, verses 3 says, And he brought out the people who were in it and cut them with saws and with harrows of iron and with axes. Even so dealt David, dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon and David and all the people returned to Jerusalem so he put these people in submission and not only put um, people in submission he he led an army to do it with them Jesus has put Satan in submission and God is telling you that it's time to lead an army to do the same thing you it's time to set the captives free and you need to take these demons by captives and send them back to where they belong into the abyss by defeating them in the name of Jesus Christ, by knowing who your Lord is. Amen. And, and, and getting on your face and praying about these situations and seeking the Lord about the situations that you're going through and the situations that you're battling and you're coming up against. If it's sickness in your body, you seek the Lord about it. If it's, if it's, anxiety and depression seek the lord about it if it's even deciding who to vote for for your nation seek the lord about it because god has an answer for you because he not only wants to give you an answer he wants to give you an understanding he wants to give you a wisdom he wants to give you um knowledge on the reason why you're doing the things that you're doing and going to places that you're going amen god wants you to deal with the enemy cruelty with cruelty and indignation because the enemy is doing the same thing to you. He's dealing with you cruel. He wants you to be, he's, he wants to still kill and destroy you. He wants to take the promises of God. He wants to take your thumbs and your toes so you can't stand on truth. So that you can't hold the sword of the spirit. He wants to do these things. He wants to take what God has for you. He wants to take your salvation, right? Meaning, and I, he can't take the salvation. But what he can do is he can make you weary enough for you to give it up. And go back to who you used to be and go back to the sinful nature. Come on, guys. And I think it's, think about it. If God is warning us about with um, pride, maybe it's something that can fester up. Maybe it's something that can live within you with, 
without you even knowing, right? It's something that sometimes you it's not seen, right? It's not like a, a, a unless someone's really prideful or very arrogant. You know, sometimes it's just like I said, not knowing who you are. But anyways, let me finish this. In Job chapter 42, 10 says, Holy Spirit, help me. And this is where he wants you to do. We know what happened to Job. And if you don't know, Job was a righteous man of God. He even said it. And um, the Lord allowed the enemy to touch his life and touch everything that he held dear. And um, he, Job didn't fall. He didn't, he didn't fall, right? Even the way everyone around him wanted to drag him down and, and wanted to drag him down, wanted to make him feel bad for himself and all types of things. He had questions, but he stayed righteous unto God. He stayed loyal to God as a servant. And so that is what the Lord is seeking from us um, in this time. He wants you to stand in righteousness. God is, is, is wanting us to live a righteous and holy life. He said that the only ones that are going to come into the kingdom is those that have, are holy. And so you may look at yourself and say, I'm not holy. God and the Holy Spirit is doing something in you that is going to create holiness out of you by cleansing out these places of um, in your heart um, that needs to be uprooted so he can fill it with his truth and his love and his peace and his joy and his discipline and his and everything else that comes with it. Okay? Galatians chapter 5, um, verse 22, 23. Go read it in Jesus' name. But Job 42, 10 says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. When the Lord is, he wants you to not be captive. He wants you to be free. That's why he sent his son. <sighs> Bless me. He sent his son so that you can have freedom. Who the son sets free is free indeed. But what happens is sometimes we lose hope because we're not staying in the word. We're not seeking the Lord and we're not doing what God has called us to do and, and utilizing what God has left for us to utilize to follow um, Jesus the right way. And it opens up our heart to pride and it's going to lead us into captivity. And no matter what the enemy may throw at you, maybe the, even you might say, I've been doing what God has told me to do. Um, maybe, and I'm saying maybe because seek the Lord for yourself, right? Seek the Lord about your situation and where you're at right now in your life. And um, if you have any pride in you. And the Lord is going to show you. Pray. Pray. Pray with your heart, your whole heart. And I love this part because he says, And the Lord turned the, the captivity of Job, meaning he turned it around. He flipped it over where it's no longer, right? And he prayed because he humbled himself and he prayed for, for God to bless um, um, these people. He humbled himself unto God and asked God to bless them. Not himself, but bless others. And so, um, I pray that y'all are y'all went with me. But the warning is of pride, and I just walk through a place of how pride can come about. And I pray that y'all go back to these verses that I have given you in this chapter in Jeremiah that I've given you because God's He's He's sad, right? God loves His people. God loves us. Can't you tell by how He sent His only Son to die for us? And it hurts him to know that his bride has been out here um, in whoredom. Go read Jeremiah, what he said. It, it, he doesn't want us to be out here um, prostituting, right? He doesn't want us to be giving ourselves up to all these different idols and gods and things, right? He wants us to be faithful to him. And to be faithful is to pour yourself out as a wife, as a bride of Christ, and say, this is all that I am, Lord. It's like the woman that poured herself out to Jesus. This is all that I am, Lord. And I need help. And if this is in me, I apologize, repent, and turn away. And ask the Lord to lead you into righteousness and holiness through his word. And um, in Jesus' name. 
like I said, I haven't been here in a while. Um, I miss you guys, and I miss just giving you what God has been just giving me. And I just thought this was something that um, we should all be aware of. Because if we all know, Jesus is coming back soon, and God is coming back for a bride that has no spot or, or blemish. And he's looking for us to be holy and righteous unto him. And if this is something that's going to hold you back into captivity and keep you from pursuing Jesus wholeheartedly and pursuing God and pursuing your purpose, um, then repent. Give this to him, even if you think that you don't got it. Because if you say you don't, do it. For real. And um, so that we can get right with God. And so that we can come into knowing um, who our Savior is. Um, you know, I have come to know that this year the Lord has shown me that he is a sovereign God. And that as Jesus is our foundation um, under our feet, as he's our, our, sh our unshakable foundation, God is our wall of protection. And the only way you're going to leave cracks in that foundation is if you don't pour your heart out to him and give him everything that's on your heart. And um, it's, it may make you lose things, right? Um, it's expensive to do that, to pour yourself out, right? It costs something, just as it costs um, Jesus to die on that cross for us. It's going to cost something. But you crying out to the Lord and humbling yourself is a sweet fragrance to the, to the nostrils of our Father. And um, that's the point of it all, is to um, put a smile on our Father's face and glorify Him um, in Jesus' name. So I don't want to be here long, but um, I pray that you were blessed by the word. And um, I pray that you understood what I was saying. And um, I'll see you next time. In Jesus' name, God bless.